Hey guys, welcome to another Amaros Talks Tech. We're gonna go ahead and set up multi-pool miner on Mining Pool Hub. It's all a bunch of scripts and command line stuff, but it's actually pretty straightforward, very simple. We can fly through this, no problems. First, what we'll do is we'll pull up Mining Pool Hub. And we're gonna actually go and sign up. Just go ahead and make a username and password and be sure to enter in a pin that you will remember. Go ahead and write this down. This is gonna be a pin that you use to update things such as your Bitcoin wallet and things like that inside of Mining Pool Hub. Once you're registered and verified, you need to go ahead and set up your auto exchange. You can see they have this quick start guide here on the right. So you wanna click on auto exchange here on the right and you'll wanna change it from not set to whichever coin you would like to be paid out in. If you want to mirror what you could do with say nice hash, you could just change this to Bitcoin. I'm actually going to set mine to Ethereum since I'm mining primarily Ethereum with my AMD cards. But the preferred coin is actually Litecoin since it has the lowest transfer fees. Go ahead and set your auto exchange coin. From there we actually need to go and download Multipool Miner. And right now it's on version 2.7.0.2. Just go ahead and download that. Now Chrome doesn't like to download this. It thinks that it's dangerous and that it has a virus because it's a miner. So we'll go ahead and just discard that. Pull up Internet Explorer, which will still download it. We'll just download it directly from there. allow us to open the zip. What we'll want to do is just copy all of this. I'm going to put it in the base C drive and make a new folder, a multi pool miner at version 2.702. .02. We'll just paste it into there. Now, if you're running Nvidia, you'll need to download excavator. Get the NVIDIA Win64 since we're on Windows 10. Open that. Inside of this folder, there's an excavator folder. This actually just needs to go right into this bin folder right there, like so. If you haven't installed any games or anything like that on this box, you might have to download these two runtimes. Uh, it's just for Visual C from Microsoft. This one's the 2015, the other one's 2012. And that's so CC Miner will operate properly. Go ahead and close that. Now, the next step we want to do is go ahead and edit our Mining Pool Hub batch file. Go to Edit, Run. It's not actually going to execute it. Now this is the part that we want to pay attention to. We'll just step through this and modify just a handful of things here. Uh, technically we don't need the wallet, but we can go ahead and put our Bitcoin wallet there if you want to be reassured that even if it does run something like that, it'll still run it for you and not the wallet that was saved there. So for instance, I'm going to paste my wallet there. I want to change this Aaron sauce to the username you set up with Mining Pool Hub right here in this field. Then we want your worker name. This one I'm just gonna call Miner2. And that one, it doesn't matter. You can just name it whatever you want. So I'm in the US region. Other than Europe, there's also an Asia. If you're in Asia, we'll just do US. Now the currency that you get to view it in is Bitcoin, US dollars, Euros. I'm just going to do US dollars. We don't have any Nvidia in this machine, so we can drop that out. We're not going to do any CPU mining either, so I'll eliminate that as well. Mining pool hub coins is just to mine straight coins and not do the auto algorithm switching. So we don't want to 
do that, we want to just do the auto algorithm switching, which is optimal anyway. If you have any 2 gig cards that you are going to mine Ethereum with, this algorithm will actually allow you to do that. All of ours are 4 gig and higher, so we'll get rid of that. Some of these are a little less profitable than others, so you can weed this down as much as you'd like. Uh, Grotskull, I know, will flag as a virus on some firewalls if you are going through a prograde firewall, that kind of stuff. But we'll just leave the rest here. Now, donate 24. You can adjust this down as you want. There's a minimum of 10 in the scripts. I'm just going to set it to 10 because we still want to be thankful and donate a little bit of mining time. That's 10 minutes per day to the developers of multi pool miner. Go ahead and save. Then we just execute it. Turn that off. There we go. It maximizes and it'll automatically download the appropriate miners. We're going to get a lot of pop-ups and we're going to have to hit yes to a lot of them. You can actually adjust that by changing user account control settings. So if we change this down to none, we'll stop getting those pop-ups. What this is doing is just going through and downloading the different miners right now, storing them in the bin files. And what it's actually going to do as well is start to benchmark. You can see up here at the top as the different algorithms that it wants to try benchmarking for us based on that list of algorithms we kept in the batch file. Now, a lot of these warnings here, like can't connect to excavator 2, those kinds of things, are perfectly normal. Uh, you'll see one a lot about nice hash, as well as uh, nano pool. Since we're not running NVIDIA, we're not really going to be using Excavator. So all those warnings and stuff are just perfectly fine. But you can see it's fleshed out a lot more benchmarks for us to run. It's actually got one running right here. And you can see with the three cards I have, what type of performance we're getting right now. Hasn't quite ramped up yet. Here it goes. As it's benchmarking, you can come back over to Mining Pool Hub, go to your hub workers, and you'll see that it showed up here on the list of hub workers. And you can go ahead and select it from the list of what jobs you want it to work on. Whole list of various auto algorithm switching. I'm just going to pick the one that has the most in it. Just update workers. These are the algorithms that it'll automatically switch through. So make sure that you pick the ones that are profitable for your graphics card. You can also go ahead and set up our wallets. Since I'm pulling out an Ethereum, we can go ahead and click on that pool, go to our wallet, and we can paste our address into here and our minimum threshold. So in my case, once we hit 0.25 ETH, I'm gonna go ahead and withdraw my wallet automatically. Make sure to put in your four digit pin here to update your account. See my balance over here and that it's confirmed that it's paying out to this wallet. We can actually put our pin in here and cash out early if we wanted to with a minimum of 0.01 ETH. We look at light pool back to the main page. We look at Litecoin. Go to our wallet you can paste in your Litecoin address, your minimum as well. And see that a 0.001 Litecoin transaction fee applies. The minimum cash out of 0.002 Litecoin. So you can see it's really, really cheap cash out as Litecoin. So if your exchange supports Litecoin, just go ahead and use Litecoin to cash out. All right, back over here to our benchmarks. You can see we've finished our benchmarks. This gives you an idea of what algorithms it has a chance of running as well as a calculation of how many BTC per day that algorithm will earn. You can see right here our Claymore AMD for ETH is actually going to net us 37 compared to, say, SIA 30, which does dual mining of ETH and SIA on our Claymore. You can see our ETH actually goes from 66 down to 56. 
you can see instead of getting 37 we'll only get 31 plus 3 bitcoin there so a total of what 0 0.00034 bitcoin instead of 37. now i know from experimenting that my sia 20 algorithm actually gets me a better rate than this so what i'm going to do is kind of hack it a little bit this is a little more advanced if you notice i don't have sia 20 in this list I think that's because it didn't benchmark properly. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out, pull up our mining pool folder here, and the stats folder is where it keeps all of the benchmarks that it's ran. You can see we have our ETH20 here. And what we'll wanna do is just go ahead and delete these results. That way it'll actually re-benchmark those for us. Now we'll go back to the base mining pool folder I'm going to right click and drag this out to the desktop so we can create a shortcut. Go ahead and start that up again. And this will rerun our benchmark for our SIA 20. Anytime that you update the multi pool mining, you'll want to go ahead and delete that stats folder if you think that you're going to improve in your performance for your cards based on the new, like updated Claymore, that kind of stuff. You don't really need to, but it's recommended. You can see our SIA Claymore came back as a benchmark item. I'm gonna go ahead and run that real quick. You can see right down here, our secondary coin is gonna be SIA. And you can see here in the miner that it's actually running ETH and SIA coin. Now that the benchmark is done, you can see we came out at 62 and a half mega hash with 1.25 giga hash for SIA, which totals out to almost exact same as just running straight ETH. Uh, power concerns might come into play here where you might want to just run straight ETH anyway in my case. Your case you might actually be a little ahead and not have such a drop in mega hash. But the multi algorithm switcher will automatically take care of all this anyway. All you need to do is make sure you have the most accurate results there. Now you can see down here we're currently running the ETH miner pull it up here you can see it's just doing straight ETH looks like it's just barely ahead you can see it just switched from what we were looking at before you can see historically what it used to be running and for how long it ran seven minutes on the dual mining if you look down at the bottom you can see we're estimated to get six and a half dollars a day with a little margin of error and it also compares how profitable it is versus just running straight Claymore with ETH. And you can see it's just barely slightly ahead. This would be the equivalent of running on, say, Nano Pool. So that's generally how you interpret what's showing up here on this screen. We're currently running and actually getting revenue. You can go back and look at Mining Pool Hub, see what your balances are. You can see. I've been bouncing around. I got some NVIDIA cards going as well. It throws the coin that I earned on the accredited for auto exchange. Once it hits a certain threshold, it goes onto the exchange here. Once it's been exchanged, it goes to your preferred coin. You start accumulating until you hit your minimum. Then it'll transfer out to your wallet automatically. You go directly into one of the pools, say SIA. You can actually look at your workers and you can actually turn on monitoring for those individual workers and you'll get an email when those workers are no longer running the desired algorithm since it will be switching back and forth between a lot of algorithms i would say only set this on the ones that you know are going to be stuck on a given algorithm for a long period of time that way you can get a notification if your miner reboots or something of like that the last thing I want to show you is Mining Pool Hub Stats. This is a brand new website that's currently actively under development. It's making a lot of changes and getting better all the time. It, you can see an estimate of how much US dollars in this case. You can change that fiat or crypto. Uh, you can see how much money you are making on a 24 hour period. And you can see down here estimates based on your hourly, daily, weekly, and so forth. This amount is actually incorrect. For instance, I am mining Ethereum, but I'm also converting to Ethereum. So 
it counts all of the money I've earned for all these other coins as one earning, and then when it transfers to Ethereum, it counts that as additional earnings. And so until they figure out how to work through that, it's going to be kind of inaccurate. I look at it and just see this amount of change in the last 24 hours as my guide for how much I'm earning because I'm mining Ethereum and converting to Ethereum. So my Ethereum is the central point that all of my earnings are going to end up in. So that amount is going to be the more accurate number. Down here you can see all of the miners that are currently actively working. Um, this one hasn't been terribly reliable for me as far as accuracy. I'll put a link to this website in the description along with links for all the other stuff we've covered. So that's pretty much it. The only hiccups I've really seen is if you have failed to update your graphics card drivers to the most recent version or if you're running NVIDIA cards and didn't install CUDA during the driver install process, or if you didn't download that excavator executable and put it into the bin folder correctly. Otherwise, if you follow what I did exactly, make sure that you have those uh, visual C++ binaries, those DLLs installed, should be smooth and have no problems. I hope that your mining goes well. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.